Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of Nerd Paints. Today we're going to paint the Weakway Pirates. What I'm going to do, I'm actually going to end up painting them slightly different from each other. And I'm also going to use a wet palette with this. The reason I want to use a wet palette is so I can easily jump from figure to figure and still be able to use some of the paint that I previously used. So if you want to, you can build your own wet palette. I posted a video on how to do that. It's pretty easy and it's pretty cheap. Um, I'll also post below which wet palette I personally use. It's also pretty cheap. I think it's like 10, 12 bucks on Amazon. Let's go ahead and just start by priming these with a black primer. And I also posted a video on that as well. If you want to, you can go back and watch the video on how I prime my miniatures. And I actually use these as the example. But let's go and just get started. So let's go ahead and prime these with a black primer and go from there. So now that our miniatures are primed, I'm actually going to start by dry brushing these. The reason I want to do this is I want to give the highlighted areas kind of a lighter color to start out with. That way when I apply the thinned out paint, it'll naturally give us a darker tone in the darker areas and a lighter tone in the lighter areas. This will give us a nice base to start with. So the main area that you want to focus on as far as adding the dry brushing to is going to be the, his head. Um, it's up to you if you want to dry brush the entire figure, but if nothing else, at least dry brush the head on all of these. I'm going to use Admin Gray to dry brush with. And when you do this, you want to add just a little bit to the end of your brush. You don't want a lot because you don't want it to cake into the detailed areas. And then you want to take a napkin or a paper towel and again brush off any excess paint so it doesn't cake into some of these detailed areas on the Pirates. And I'm just going to start by dry brushing his head, his face, and I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to dry brush the entire figure. So pretty much just like that. So if you want, go ahead and pause the video at this point and do the same with all four of your figures. And then we'll continue on. Now that they're all dry brushed, I'm going to start with the first figure. I'm going to use Still Legion Drab for the base color and Carrick Stone. And the character stone is going to be the lighter, so keep these separate. I'm going to apply both of these to my wet palette. Add a little bit of water. So it's about a 3 to 1 ratio. 3 paint to 1 water. You want it to kind of just start beating up on your wet palette, if you notice on there. I'm going to use a number 2 brush. And I'm going to use this to paint the first figure's skin. Now if you notice where you have the black primer, it stays kind of a darker color. Um, the highlighted areas, those kind of the strips that go around his head, add a second coat if you need to, which that's going to wrap around where his eyes are and just kind of going back along his face, his head. We'll go and pause it until you're done. And then the second figure, we're going to use more Fame Brown. So go ahead and add that to your wet palette. Add a little bit of water. You want to kind of organize this in a way on your wet palette also to keep it separate from you know, your first figure, second, third, and fourth. That way it'll be easy to jump back and forth and know which one is which. Go ahead and do the same thing with the second figure. Now for the third figure, we're gonna use dried bark. Go ahead and add that to your wet palette and the same thing. We're gonna go ahead and paint the third figure. Then the fourth figure, we're going to use Gorthor Brown. So same thing, add that to your wet palette, add a little bit of water, and we'll paint the fourth figure. Now once you're done with painting the skin on all the figures, we're going to go and jump back to our first figure. And we're going to paint his shirt. And I'm going to use Castellan Green, so I'm going to add this to my wet palette. And then go ahead and paint his shirt. Now for the second figure, we're going to use Stormvermin Fur for his shirt. And this is the one with the Mornfang Brown. 
So I'm gonna add this to my wet palette. I'm gonna keep it kind of close to where the Mornfang Brown is so I know that this is for that figure. And make sure you add a little bit of water to that. Now for the third figure, the one that had dried bark for his skin, we're gonna use Cantor Blue. And so again, I'm gonna add this to my wet palette. Add a little bit of water. And then go ahead and paint his shirt, as well as his sleeves. And then once you're done with that, I'm gonna to jump to the fourth figure, the one that had Gorthor Brown. I'm gonna use P3 Trader Green. Now if you don't have P3 Trader Green, if you're just using Citadel, then use Death World Forest. It's pretty close to the same color as Trader Green, just slightly different. But go ahead and add that to your wet palette. Add a little bit of water, so it's about a three to one ratio, and then go ahead and paint his shirt. Now that we're done with that, um, I'm gonna paint the armor on all the figures with dried bark. So go ahead and jump back to the dried bark, which is on your wet palette, and go ahead and paint the armor on all the figures. This is gonna be consistent between all four figures. I'm gonna paint the boots as well on all four figures with dried bark, as well as the armor that's up around his neck area. So make sure you get that as well. Kind of up in this area right here. Go ahead and pause it at this point until you're done with that. And then, but once you're done, then I'm gonna jump back to the first figure. And that's the one with the stillage and drab for his face, his skin. I'm gonna paint his pants. And I'm gonna use that Carrick Stone. So make sure you have a little bit of water mixed in with that. And then go ahead and paint his pants with the Carrick Stone. And if you need to, add a second coat. But make sure he's pretty dry though before you add that second coat. And I'm gonna do the same with the second that had the Mornfang Brown for his skin. I'm gonna use Carrick Stone on his pants as well. Now for the third figure, I'm gonna use Xandry Dust. His is gonna be slightly different than those first two. Add that to your wet palette, and then add some water, and then paint his pants with the Xandry Dust. Then go ahead and pause it until you're done with that figure. And once you're ready to move on, let's go ahead and jump to the fourth figure, and I'm gonna use Eshin Gray. So I'm gonna add Eshin Gray to my wet palette, and again, add a little bit of water. I'm going to paint the fourth figure with Eshin Gray for his pants. Once you're done with that, then I'm going to paint all the straps on all the figures, including their belts, with Mornfang Brown. So I'm going to jump back to Mornfang Brown. I'm going to go and paint all the straps going across their leather armor and their belts with the Mornfang Brown. Now there's that strip of armor that's going from the shoulder armor to shoulder armor on all the figures. I'm going to do that a different color. So leave that as is for now, but go ahead and paint the belts on all of these, as well as the sheath for the knives with the Mornfang Brown. And there's a little strap that goes across here. I'm gonna paint that with Mornfang Brown. Now the part that I forgot to do, and I apologize, uh, when I painted the armor, I actually wanted to paint their armor that's going across their wrists with the dried bark. So go ahead and jump back and then paint the the armor that's on going across their wrists with the dried bark. Okay, go ahead and pause it at this point until you're completely done with all four figures for this stage. Once you're done, then I'm gonna go back to the first figure. And then again, with the one with the still legion drab. And for him, I'm gonna paint his hair with storm vermin fur. So I'm gonna add that to my wet palette. Make sure you add a little bit of water as well. And for the second guy with the Mornfame Brown, I'm going to use the Carrick Stone actually for his hair. And for the third figure, I'm gonna use Eshin Gray for his hair. Again, this is the one with the dried bark for his skin. 
And the last guy, I think I'm actually going to take some Carrick Stone and some of that Storm Vermin Fur and just do kind of a mix. So I'm going to mix these two on my wet palette and then use that to paint his hair. Now for the shoulder armor, I'm going to use Rune Lord Brass. So I'll add a little bit of this to my wet palette. Just a little bit of water. This paint is already fairly thin. So you may need to add a couple of coats, two or three coats. But go ahead and go through all of your figures and paint the shoulder armor, as well as that strap that's going from shoulder armor to shoulder armor, this part right here. This guy, I'm going to give him a brass buckle. I'll do that for a couple of the figures. It's up to you which ones. Again, I'm not going to use this also on the top part of his knife for the hilt. And then on all the figures, I'm going to paint this part of the gun, kind of the bottom part of the gun. Give it kind of a brass, kind of a brass tone. as well as in the top portion of the gun where the scope is and these rings that are wrapping around the guns. I'm gonna do that with all four figures. And fairly thin, I'm gonna add a thin layer just on the outer part, the armor that's on his forearm. I'm gonna take some lead belker and I'm just going straight from the the paint pot. I'm going to add that to two of the figures on their, their buckles as well as the hilt of the blade on two of the figures. I'll go through all the figures and also paint the rivets. I'm going to jump back to the Eschen Gray. Again, this is a one of the reasons that I love using a paint palette. I can easily jump between different paints that I've been using. I'm going to paint all of the blades on all the figures with Eschen Gray. I'm just going to come in on all the figures on their guns and just paint the middle section Eschen Gray near where their hands are. And while we're still working with Eschen Gray, I'm going to jump to the second figure, the one where we painted his skin tone with Mournfang Brown. I'm going to paint his hair straps with the Eschen Gray. And once you're done with Eschen Gray, then I'm going to jump back to the first figure and paint his hair straps with Mournfang Brown. And that's the one where we painted a his skin tone with Still Legion Drab. And then for the remaining two figures, we're going to be using a different shade for the other two figures' hair straps. So I'm going to hold off on those two for now. But once you're done with that, then we'll go ahead and now move on to working on the highlights. Okay, for the first highlights, I'm going to jump back to the first figure. I want to start with going back to the Still Legion Drab and Carrick Stone. So I'm going to go back to the wet palette. I'm going to add a little more still and drab because I'm almost out. You need to add a little bit of water. And I'm just going to keep mixing until I get this kind of medium tone right here. I'm just going to start highlighting this first figure. And this is just going to be the skin above his eyes that are going to stretch back along his head. As well as going around his eyes. I'm going to paint a little bit on his nose and his mouth. Maybe a little bit on his chin. Maybe just a little bit on the top of his head as well. But once you're done with that, I'm going to add some Ushapti bone to my wet palette. I'm going to just highlight just above his eyes with the Ushapti bone. And then along his jawline, there's actually some little tiny spikes that are poking out. So I'm going to use the Ushapti bone and paint those. It's, they're pretty small, so just be really careful. I'm going to use that number two brush. Make sure you just get a little bit on the tip of your brush. 
Let's zoom in here so you can see what I mean. Just this area right in here. Again, it's pretty small. Sorry, this is a very shallow depth of field with my camera because I'm zoomed in pretty tight. But you can see what I mean. And just above his eyes. And maybe just a little bit as it comes across the top of his head. And then just a little bit across his nose. And I think that looks good. So same thing with his hands. I'm going to highlight across his knuckles. Now, once you're done with that, I'm going to jump to the second figure with the Morton Fang Brown. He's going to be a little bit easier because I'm actually going to, instead of highlight a lot of the areas, I'm going to darken a little bit more. I'm going to take some Nuln Oil. I'm going to put a little bit on the tip of my brush. I'm just going to darken the side of his head a little bit more. I want this guy to be a little bit darker, so I'm going to add a little bit in his eyes. If you get too much in there, make sure you soak it up. You don't want it to pull up in there. So just dry off your brush and just soak it up a little bit. And again, I'm going to add this to along his jawline. It's kind of in the more recessed areas. And then underneath his head, the back of his head. Just want to really deepen these colors a little bit more. Maybe along his neck. I'm going to let that dry. And I'm going to jump to the third figure now. The one with dried bark for his skin. Remember we have our Yushapti bone. I'm going to take a little bit of dried bark and a little bit of Yushapti bone. I'm going to do kind of a mix between these two. I'm going to add just a little bit of water to this. I want to thin it out just a little bit. And then I'm going to use this to highlight the third figure. So same thing as we did with the first one. I'm going to highlight his knuckles, um, his nose, everywhere you did, just this, just like you did with the first figure. Again, the top of his head, the strips that are going along the, the top of his head and along the side of his face. His nose, his mouth, his chin. And then I'm going to take that Yushapti bone, just pierce Yushapti bone. Again, just like we did before, I'm going to get the those spikes that are coming along his jawline. They're really small, so just make sure you get a teeny bit on the tip of your brush. And once you're done with that, I'm going to jump back to our second figure. The one with the Morning Fame Brown, now that the shade is completely dry. I'm going to take a little bit of the Gorthor Brown from our wet palette and mix just a little bit of Morning Fame Brown. Kind of a shade in between. Maybe just a little bit of Carrick Stone as well, just to brighten that up just a little bit more. I think that looks good. I'm going to use this to highlight just above his eyes, kind of that strip that's going along the side of his head or on top of his head. Let's just further brighten the top part a little bit more. And then maybe along the side of his face, I'm going to use this to paint the back of his hand to highlight that a little bit more and then also across his knuckles. And then same thing, I'm going to take the Yushapti Bone. On him, I'm going to make it just slightly darker. So Yushapti Bone uh, mixed in with the dried bark. And I'm going to paint the little spikes that are going along his jawline. So his might just be slightly darker than the other figures so far. And then also above his eyes. And then very lightly on his nose, maybe along his mouth. And then I'm going to jump to the fourth figure. 
I'm gonna add Cadian Flesh Tone to my wet palette. Remember, this is our Gorthor Brown. I'm gonna take some Cadian Flesh Tone and the Gorthor Brown and just do a little bit of a mix between those two. So it's not quite as bright as the Cadian Flesh Tone, somewhere in between. I'm gonna pull some of the Cadian Flesh Tone down. I kind of want this mid color right here. Add just a little bit of water just to thin that out a little bit further. And then just as before, I'm going to go ahead and highlight this fourth figure. And then again, the Ushapti bone along his jawline as well on the spikes. Might take a little bit of the Ushapti bone actually and Cadian flesh tone. Just slightly brighter above his eyes. Just along his brow line. And then wrapped ar wrapping around his eyes. Maybe just a little bit along the top strip on his head. I might go back to that mid darker tone just for his knuckles and the backs of his hands. Once you're done with all of that, then we're now go ahead and do some shading. So I'm gonna jump back to the first figure and I'm gonna use Agrax Earthshade on the first figure. I'm going straight from the pell, just on the tip of my brush. I'm going to use this to just going to start painting, brushing it in on his head, mainly in the more recessed areas, in the crevices, in his eyes, maybe along his jawline, on the side of his head, a little bit on the top of his head. I'm going to add this to his hair as well. I'm also going to shade his hands and his armor, his shirt, and his pants. And I'll use this on his boots as well. I'm then going to take some non oil and shade his blade. Maybe a little bit on his sheath, just to darken that up a little bit further. I'm going to add a little bit of Nolan oil to his hair as well. I want to darken that up a little bit further. And then I'll apply Nolan oil on the entirety of his gun. So everywhere on his gun. Maybe a little bit in his boots as well. I want to darken that up just a little bit further. And the known oil on the boots, I'm mainly getting in this top part area, just in the folds of his boots before it actually gets to the foot of his boot. And I'll add a little bit of known oil just on the side of his head, just to darken that up just a little bit more. This is the more recessed areas. And then in his eyes, Again, they have kind of a leathery skin, so this will help add just a little bit more of a darker tone to his face and his head. Use some known oil where his hair is, and again, a little bit on the side of his head. And this will help give that leathery type look. I'm gonna switch back to Agrix Earthshade, and the second figure, Go ahead and go ahead and shade his pants, his leather armor, his belt. And then a little bit into his head. Uh, maybe a little bit onto his hands where his hand meets his, his wrist armor. And then we're also going to use Agrax Earthshade to further shade our third figure. And that's one that we use Dryad Bark for his skin. And I'm just kind of brushing this in. I'm brushing it into his eyes, 
don't get a shirt on this one. A um, little bit on his the sheath for his knife and his pants. Again, the back of his hands. Now for his shirt, I'm going to use Dragonhof Nightshade. It's kind of a darker blue shade. And then for the next one, the fourth guy, again, I'm going to use Agrax Earthshade. And for him, I'm going to shade almost everywhere, except for the highlighted areas on his head. So again, on the side of his head, the top, his boots, but not his pants. On his pants, I'm going to use Known Oil. And again, Known Oil on his gun as well. and his blade. Now once you're done with that, go ahead and wait for all of your figures to get done drying completely. It might take a little while. Um, but once you're finished, then we're going to move on to further highlights. Now that everything is dry, we're going to go jump back to our first figure. So let's go back to that Carrick Stone. And I'm going to just highlight the knuckles a little bit further with the Carrick Stone. And then the back of his hand a little bit. I'm also going to use this to highlight his pants. So just this front part of the pants, make sure you don't get it into the creases that have the shade. But just kind of go through and re-highlight his, his pants, then maybe the tips of his boots. It's fairly thin. The paint is fairly thin. If you need to, add a little bit more water. But... It's fairly thin, so we're going to highlight the tips of his boots. And then we're going to use Morphine Brown to highlight the straps on his armor. And then his belt. I'm going to take a little bit of, of the dried bark and then Darken up the Mournfang Brown just a little bit. And add just a little bit to his belt, just to darken it up just a little bit into some of the more recessed areas. Also his sheath for his knife. Let's just kind of dirty up the belt just a little bit. I'm going to take some Balthazar Gold. Almost looks like a copperish color. Add that on my wet palette next to the brass, and I'm just going to highlight his armor and his, his buckle. And I add a little bit to my dry brush, and then dry brush off the excess. I'm going to use that to dry brush his gun, where we painted the brass color. And also his shoulder armor. Okay, I'm going to take the Strachan Green, add that to my wet palette, and then I'm going to pull a little bit of the Castellan Green, just add kind of a mid shade between those two. Add a little bit of water to that. I'm going to use this to highlight his shirt. Again, we're still working on the first figure. Remember the top of his shoulder, his arms, are going to be brighter than underneath because that's where the light is going to be hitting. So keep the underneath his arms dark. We'll highlight his shirt down below here and take some lead belker. Add a little bit to our dry brush. Again, brush off any excess. And we're going to dry brush his blade, his knife. This is going to be the same on all the figures as far as the knife goes. We're going to dry brush that on all the figures. If you want to do that now, you can. Um, I'll jump to the other figures here in a little bit. I actually just dry brush just a little bit overall on all of the gun. Not much. We don't want very much on the dry brush. We still want the brass to show through. 
Go back to some Balthazar gold. Straight from the pot. I'm actually going to paint his hair the clips or the ties on him with this brass type color. I'm going to add some admin gray to my wet palette. And then I'm going to highlight his hair with that. Okay, I think we are ready now to move on to our second figure. Come back into here into that mid green. I'm gonna mix in a little bit with Carrick or with Yushapti Bone. I'm gonna highlight his shirt with that. You can remember that the tops of his arms are going to be brighter than below. I'm going to take between the dried bark and the shapti bone, and I'm going to highlight the, the armor with this. So just kind of paint a thin strip going across the armor the leather and you're going to do this on all the figures with the leather just the edges the ridges of that i'm going to take the shapti bone add a little bit of water to that and i'm going to use that to highlight his pants again this is the second figure the one that we painted more faint brown with his skin Pretty similar to the first figure as far as the pants go. Same thing as before, might take that mid-tone for his boots between the dried bark and the shapti bone. Just add a little bit of highlight to his boots. And then again, we're going to use Morphine Brown to highlight his straps as well. Okay, I'm going to use the Balthasar Gold. Just as before, you may have already done this if you went through all of your figures, but I'm going to dry brush that across his shoulder armor. And across the wrist armor. And across his gun, where the brass is. top part where his scope is and again jump back to lead belker and this part you may have already done but i'm going to do the same thing as before and dry brush that on his blade and a little bit on his gun i'm going to jump back to that carrick stone and highlight his hair with the carrick stone Again, this is the second figure that we're working on still. I'm going to add just a little bit of Mournfang brown into his hair. Maybe a little bit of dried bark. Let me add that in here as well. Okay, I'm going to now use Mephist on red. Add that to my wet palette. I'm going to take some Mournfang Brown, mix that in with the Mephist on red. I'm actually going to add a little more Mournfang Brown to my wet palette. 
I'm gonna mix these two so it's kind of a reddish brown tone. I'm actually gonna use this for his hair straps. I'm gonna take some Ethonian camo shade and I'm gonna shade a little bit into his shirt, into the recesses, uh, maybe across his arms. Just add a little bit more of a green back in there and also to further shade the recess areas into his shirt. And last, when I'm done with that, I'm gonna use some known oil. I'm gonna put a little bit more back into his hair just to darken that up a little bit further. Also into his hair straps where we just painted the red. And I think that looks good so far for that one. So let's go and jump into the third one. I'm gonna take some Hoth blue, add that to my wet palette, and then take some of the Cantor blue that we have on our wet palette and just kind of add a mix between these two. Just get kind of a mid-tone between the two shades. I add a little bit of water in my wet palette as well. Just to thin this out a little bit more. That's probably good. And then I'm gonna go ahead and highlight his shirt with this. And for the brightest highlights, just go straight hoth blue to where it's gonna be the brightest on his shirt. I'm gonna take some Fenrisian gray and add that to my wet palette. And then get kind of a mix between the Hoth blue and the Fenrisian gray, add a little bit of water. And I'm gonna use this to highlight the brightest areas where the light would hit. The tops of his arms, of his shirt, and then next I'm going to let that dry. I'm going to take a little bit of that Xandri dust and mix in a little bit of the Yushapti bone to brighten that up a little bit. And I'll use this to highlight his pants. Okay, when you're ready to move on from that, I'm going to take a little bit of that Cadian flesh tone along with the Gorthor brown and kind of that mid tone. I'm going to re highlight the knuckles on his hand and the back of his hands and maybe just a little bit on the top of his head. Do the same thing with him, actually. I'm going to use that same reddish brown and paint his hair straps as well. Then the Eshin gray with a little bit of Yushapti bone. I'm gonna highlight his hair with this. So this is kind of a mix between the Eshin gray and the Yushapti bone. A little bit of Yushapti bone, mostly gray. Same thing as before, might take that mid-tone and then highlight his boots between the dried bark and the Yushapti bone. Take a little bit of the Mornfang brown and highlight his belt, the straps, and his sheath as well. I'm going to go back to our Balthazar Gold. If you haven't done this already, you may have already done it, but again, go back to our dry brush, get off of the excess, and dry brush across his shoulder armor. His gun, where the brass is. That's going to be the bottom part, and then also up where the scope is. 
And then again, just as we did before, jump back to our lead belker. Make sure you wash and dry off your dry brush before you do this so you don't have a mix. And then just lightly dry brush his gun so you still have the brass showing through. I actually did his buckle with the lead belker, so I'm gonna add a little bit to my brush and then highlight his buckle and also the rivets on him as well, just as before. And then that dried bark mixed with a little of a Ushapti bone. If you haven't done this already, then again, highlight his leather armor. All right, when you're ready to move on, let's go ahead and jump to the fourth figure. And again, I'm gonna highlight his leather armor with that dried bark and Ushapti bone mix. I'm going to take some admin gray, add that to my wet palette. And then that eschen gray, I'm going to mix those two, just get kind of a mid tone between the two. Add a little bit of water to that to thin it out. Get a little bit on my brush, and then I'm going to use that to highlight his pants. Okay, I'm gonna go around and just continue to build up the highlight so I might get a little bit brighter along his knee. Maybe a little bit on the side of his pants. Just where you'd think the light would hit the most. If the light source was above him, it's gonna hit his knees more. I'm gonna take a little more Trader Green. And again, if you don't have Trader Green, use Death World Forest. I'm gonna re-add a little bit more Trader Green to my palette. I'm gonna take some Creed Khaki edge paint, add that to my wet palette. I'm gonna pull and mix those two. Let's add a little bit of water again to this, just to thin that out. I'm gonna start with kind of a mid-tone and highlight his shirt. Might just jump into the straight khaki, the edge paint. You get the brightest edges of his shirt. Mainly focusing down here on the bottom part where it hangs out, where the light might hit more. If you need to, jump back into the darker tone and just kind of transition between these paints a little bit better. Just to blend this in a little bit better. Right now I feel like the darker shade is a little too dark, so I'm gonna use this to transition better. Okay, now again, that dried bark and you shop your bone. I'm gonna use this to highlight his hair. For his hair clips, I'm gonna use blue. And this is mostly Cantor blue. A little bit of the Hoth blue. I'm gonna paint his hair clips with this. There's hair ties. I'm gonna take that Balthazar gold just as before and dry brush his shoulder armor. Again, his his weapon, his gun, where the brass is. And then jump back to our lead belker on a clean dry brush and dry brush the blade on his knife and his gun. And then using the lead belker on his buckle. 
I'm going to use that Morning Brown, a little bit of water, and again, just as before, highlight his straps as well as his belt and his sheath. Let's go back to that dried bark and you shot the bone. We need to add a little bit more water back in there and then highlight his boots just as before. Just getting the tips of his boots and maybe a little bit of the folds on his boots. Okay, at this point, go ahead and pause the video if you need to until you're done with all four figures up to this point. When you're ready to move on, go ahead and continue on, but we're gonna paint the bases with these. So they live in the desert, so I'm gonna paint all the figures using a desert base. So for that, I'm gonna use Mornfang Brown and just paint all the bases first with Mornfang Brown. I'm going straight from the pot. I'm not worried of, about thinning this out. I'm gonna add a couple of coats. Make sure it's completely dry before you add a second coat. And when you're done painting all the figures' bases with the Mornfang Brown, I'm gonna take a grill and earth. You wanna add this on pretty thick and just kind of push it around. So what this does is it's gonna give us that cracked desert base. The thicker it is, the larger the cracks. The thinner, then the smaller the cracks. So I tend to have it thin going around his feet and just kind of thick in some areas, thin in other areas to give it a little bit of a variety. Now you're gonna want this to dry at least two to three hours before you move on to the next step. So go ahead and do this with all the bases. Apply the grill and earth to all four figures and then let that dry for a good, I would probably say three to four hours. Once it's completely dry, then we're gonna dry brush Flayed One Flesh onto the, onto that base. I'm gonna just press down very lightly. I'm using a brush here, and it looks like it's pretty dry. So I'm gonna take Flayed One Flesh, dry brush off any excess, and then very lightly, go ahead and dry brush that on. Make sure you avoid the gun, his boots. If you get any on there, then just jump back and then retouch that up. The paint on your wet palette should still be pretty wet, so you should be able to just jump right back to some of those paints and do any touch-ups if you need to. After that, I'm gonna take Pallid Witch Flesh, very lightly dry brush this on. This will help give it more of a dry desert look. And again, you're gonna do this with all of the different figures, all four. Yeah, it looks good. Okay, I'm gonna take two of the figures and I'm gonna paint around the ridges with the Mephistone Red. This will just distinguish two of the elite figures from two of the regular figures. So I'm gonna go around the rings of these two with Mephistone Red. Whichever two you choose, it doesn't matter. And this is kind of an option. You don't have to do this. If you wanna do all the bases brown, it's up to you, but this, to me, it just distinguishes the elite figures from the regular figures. I'm gonna do that with two of the figures. And the other two, I'm gonna do black. But I think that does it. I think that does it for the Weakway Pirates. They look pretty cool. So let those completely dry, and then you're gonna to wanna to spray those with a lacquer to seal it. But other than that, I think we're done. Um, thanks again for watching. Be sure to subscribe below. And if you want, you can also click my Patreon link below to help support further videos. But again, thanks for watching, and until next time, happy painting.